Hey Fight Fans, welcome to uh, Research Methods and let's talk about Chapter 3 of your research paper, the methodology. Methodology is so critical. Uh, this is where you describe exactly what you're going to do to test your hypothesis. And you cannot assume that the reader knows anything. You must be very thorough and very precise in the methodology. But in theory, when you write chapter one, your introduction, your research questions, your hypothesis, chapter two, your literature review, and chapter three, your methodology, that's technically known as a proposal for a dissertation or a thesis or a paper that you're going to write. In theory, someone should be able to come by, pick up your three chapters, and run the test and do the study uh, without asking a single question because you've been so thorough laying out exactly what you're going to do. So kick back. Relax, and let's talk about the methodology for research methods. So, uh, what is research? Well, a systematic review, a careful systematic patent study, um, the, uh, an investigation in some field of knowledge undertaken to establish facts or privileges. That's what Grinnell said in 1993. Um, so, what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, determine that you have an issue, uh, form a research question for that issue, make it measurable through your hypothesis, uh, conduct a very thorough literature review to make sure that, uh, uh, to see what anyone else has done on the topic, and make sure the question hasn't already be an been answered, and then come up with the methodology for testing it, finish the job by testing it and forming your conclusions. So, um, when you conceptualize your design, um, you know, it's very important you think about scientific methods. Quantitative research is usually the best. It, it really involves systematic control, valid and rigorous establishment of associations and causations that permit, permit the accurate prediction of outcomes under a given set of uh, conditions. So when you're looking at a re your research design must contain things like the design study, the measurement procedures, the frame of analysis, the time frame. Um, so you start constructing a data uh, instrument for data collection. You can collect data in a lot of ways. You can use historical data. You can use data you collect from maybe um, um, something you're following through observation in your workplace. Uh, you can use um, uh, surveys, observations, interviews. Uh, there's a whole host of ways that uh, you can conduct get your data that you're going to use for your paper. Um, you can even look at six to eight really good studies on your topic and statistically analyze those to see how different authors approached your topic and to compare and contrast what they had to say. So you can uh, do something called a meta-analysis is where you look at the six or eight studies. So there's a lot of ways uh, uh, you know, but first, the first thing you need to do as you approach your um, methodology is decide how you're going to collect your data, okay? And then it re it's really important that you put a lot of thought into this because if you don't, you uh, are you could you will make mistakes and your your research will be no good. You've got to decide right up front. I worked with the city of Cape Coral uh, in rate design in the 90s and I looked at, um, was we were, were having big issues getting a rate study done in, in 94 because of the data that was provided by the city was bad data. And um, so we, we looked at it and we were having a really hard time. And so I decided we had 14 square miles that we had put water, sewer, and irrigation in. And the forecasting data that they'd used were telling us that we were gonna make all these millions of dollars. And in the reality of the situation is we weren't making them, so I wanted to know why. And so I looked at um, the 14 square miles in 92. I, I had to pull down an ASCII file. Remember it was 1992. I had to pull down an ASCII file with um, the data in it for a six month period. And I pulled down the same area, same 14 square miles in 1994. So I had, uh, we called it the blue area. I had the blue area in 92 with no irrigation water and then in, in 94 with irrigation water. And um, the, the difference is in 92, 
uh, residents watered their grass with potable water, spent whatever was necessary. 94, they paid $5 a month for life for their irrigation water that we had put into the city. Uh, well, this wasn't accounted for when they did their forecasting uh, model. And so what I found was that in 92, over that six month period, they used 200 million gallons more than in 94 under the same six month period. And a good example is my neighbor across the street was single lady, traveled a lot, but she liked her grass green. So in 92, she watered her grass and she paid $275 a month for a water bill and didn't mind. But then in 94, they gave her $5 a month for life irrigation and she wasn't ever there to drink water, so she paid $25. And that happened throughout the entire area. Therefore, to put it in perspective, the city of Cape Coral at the time only sold about 207 million gallons of water per month. So we effectively eliminated one uh, month out of six for revenue, two months out of 12 for revenue in that particular area. And we were duplicating this all over the city. Now, the politicians and environmentalists will say that's great. And it was. We were eliminating the amount of water use but the politician that needed to pay the bills would say, uh-oh, we're predicting that we're going to make this much money, but we're really only going to make this much money, and the difference was significant. So as you're putting together your data, make sure that you're very careful about um, how you do it. Make sure your control group is a contiguous for control group that all has a vested interest in data. I can test this class about this class because you're all in it, you can take a survey, you can answer honestly. But if I take that same survey and give it to my buddies and my breakfast group on Saturday, on Tuesday morning, they, they'll fill it out. I'll have data to analyze. It won't mean a thing because they don't have a, a clue what I'm doing in my class. Um, so, and then, then there's sampling. There's a sampling technique. Uh, there's not necessarily a number I can tell you how big should your sample be. You need a significant sample. Now, granted, they can look at 800 people and tell who's going to win the presidential election. But in your organization, you need a significant sample of um, uh, your, your population. And there's a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, methods to do that, and your book has a very good method in it. So follow that and make sure your sample is large enough. So basically, what you're going to do in your methodology is you need to look at, at um, the data. Are you going to use survey, historical, meta-analysis, some other form of data? How are you going to get your data? What type of research instrument are, going to, are you going to use to collect that data? Will it be a survey, an, an interview, uh, just historical data? And what is your control group? Who are the people or, or um, numbers that you're going to um, uh, survey, that you're going to work with? Now remember, the control group is just as important if you're using historical data as it is if you're using a survey. The control group might be the group of people you're giving a survey if you're giving a survey. But um, the data came from somewhere. You want to know how it was collected, under what circumstances, uh, is the data accurate? Um, and then the procedure. How are you going to make this study work? The who, what, when, where, and how? Uh, and then how do you plan to measure your hypothesis? And anything else that you can put into your methodology. Now remember, in a proposal, you're writing the methodology before you uh, actually get to the class that you uh, submit the method, uh, that you complete the analysis. So. You may have to change this a little bit when you get into your capstone and you have to uh, complete the analysis. But um, do the best you can with what, you, what knowledge you have right now and understand you may have to change it as you go along a little bit. So the methodology is basic the who, the what, the when, where, why, and how. Everything that, that you need to know. So um, I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples if um, th this is a uh, an example methodology, uh, you know this is this is uh, pilot fatigue examining the relationship between flight time, rest periods, and pilot burnout, and you can see that uh, um, they have uh, a good uh, research question: How does the operational tempo of Air Force flight operations in a C-17 affect the level of fatigue and willingness for a pilot to discontinue service if given a chance? 
and then there's a hypothesis, both the null and the positive, and we'll look at the positive. There's a statistically significant relationship between the number of flight hours obtained and the effect of fatigue felt by the pilot, okay? And so when you jump into your methodology, you're looking at certain variables. So you've got methodology, a good lead-in paragraph, always like that, and then talks about the research type. What type of research are you planning to do? Um, notice that they're using uh, literature uh, to support what they're doing. Um, definition of terms is fine, uh, especially a lot of you are doing very complicated paper, writing very complicated papers. Uh, so um, it's very, very good idea to um, have a, a definition of terms. And then you will move into it. how are you going to collect your data, okay? And uh, talk about how you're going to plan, how you plan to collect the data, and what you, um, how you plan to make that happen. Um, then talks about different different ways of collecting data, uh, what it means, flight duty hours, rest uh, periods, f fatigue and burnout, um, assumptions and limitations very important, and then other limitations. So, uh, and then how are, how are you going to analyze your data? Like or don't assume because if you're using a survey, don't assume the reader knows it's a Likert five-point scale. Talk about that. Um, uh, Chi-square is one that they plan to use. Also ANOVA. Um, and um, then, then we get into program outcomes, and you look at the program outcomes, and you talk about how you plan to address those. Uh, so if we move on to another example... This, this is a kind of a little bit more kind of simpler example. Uh, methodology, talk about the methodology, method of study, how you're going to collect the data, time frame. Don't assume the reader knows anything, okay? Anything you know, put it on paper. How are you going to analyze the data? Who are the participants? What's the method that you're going to use? How are you planning to validate your... Uh, is it going to be reliable and valid? How are you going to uh, prove that? How are you going to collect your data in great detail? Data analysis, assumptions. Okay, so that's basically what you're looking for in the basic methodology. So this is Dr. Don Four. I look forward to reading methodologies, and, and I appreciate the hard work so far. Uh, thank you very much.